Shelly's drowning here and I'm going to throw her a lifeline. Uh, the corporate the information we've requested is corporate profits before taxes. That is what committee has requested. That is exactly what the previous Liberal government provided in Percent November of, of 2005. Percent of nominal GDP. That's what your document says. Guys, I'm going to let you that time short because the viewers can't finish the document. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Tom Shelley's Mulcair, having would you? trouble with basic reading here. It's Mom, corporate profits before it. tax. First, first of all, there are the, the opposition raising the idea that you will not be funding um, programs that would give safe access to uh, access to safe abortions and contraception. That topic is not part and parcel of this initiative. This initiative is designed to ask other countries who are in a, a, a position to help to uh, save lives of vulnerable but children it, but, and mothers but, but, but just, in other countries. I May I finish, please? May I finish? It, Trained health care officials are needed in these uh, very poor countries, and we need to put our uh, our plan forward and get some help to make sure that but these appreciating people that but but you know here some statistics say that you know up 10 to 13 percent of women in these vulnerable positions are dying because of unsafe abortions and so this would be a component of that Shelley let me start with you can you explain uh, why correctional services uh, the, the money being spent is going up so fast in a time of austerity well, there's a cost to protecting the interest of our victims, and uh, certainly that cost um, is being reflected. But I have to disagree with some of the numbers that you're presenting, uh, Evan. Numbers can be skewed any which way we, uh, you, you want, depending on who's doing it. She Shelley Glover, one, th one comment you made that part of the money that you're spending is actually going to rehabilitation programs. I I've heard that less than 2% of the, uh, the budget goes to rehabilitation programs. We heard yesterday these prison farms where, farmer where prisoners were, uh, to produce food are being cancelled. So, so are you saying that th there's money being allocated to new rehabilitation programs? There's a, there's a problem when you talk about numbers. First and foremost, when you talk about uh, that number you just provided, does that include things that perhaps don't cost money? For example, in our prison systems, we promote reunification of families. That doesn't cost a dime. We promote that our inmates uh, visit counselors when they need to, uh, to speak to someone. That doesn't cost a dime. So again, numbers can be spewed any which way. I worked in this system. I'll tell you straightforward, Canadians are seeing an increase in crime. I don't care what Stats Canada has reported uh, because <laughs> yeah, don't, they don't only count the reported crime. There's a problem when you talk about numbers. 92% of sex crime victims do not report their crime. I don't care what Stats Canada has reported. And the other thing is, let's not forget, the Liberals have an interest here because predominantly prison uh, inmates vote Liberal during elections. Cops vote Conservative. Numbers can be skewed any which way we, uh, you, you want, depending on who's doing it. Liberal Party leaders were uncharacteristically focused today on policies and not personal attacks. It was a different story in some of the local campaigns. A Liberal lashed out at the way an NDP official referred to voters in Winnipeg North. And a high-profile Tory suggested a Liberal MP is just too old for the job. Global's Nellie Gonzalez reports. Anita Neville has been the Liberal MP for Winnipeg South Centre since 2000, and the 68-year-old is determined to fight another election. It's still not clear who her Conservative opponent will be, but a Tory MP in a neighbouring riding stepped into the fray today, suggesting Neville is too old. We need some, some fresh blood. We need some new people who come with, uh, with some new ideas and who are willing to really stand up for their constituents. And I'm afraid Ms. Neville has, uh, has passed her expiry date. Shelley Glover is seeking re-election in St. Boniface. Glover's attack drew this response from Anita Neville. It's typical of the Conservative Party when they don't have anything real or substantive to say to resort to name-calling and personal attacks. The decision to prorogue or shut down Parliament continues to dog the government. Yesterday, right here on Power and Politics, Stephen Harper's former Chief of Staff, University of Calgary Professor Tom Flanagan, questioned the government and Stephen Harper's explanation for shutting down Parliament. Let's remind you, here's what he had to say. The government's talking points really don't have much credibility. Uh, you know, everybody knows that Parliament was prorogued in order to shut down the uh, Afghan inquiry, and the trouble is that the, the government doesn't want to explain why that was necessary. I personally think it was a highly defensible action, but instead of having an adult defense of it, the government comes up with these childish talking points. Uh, so, 
you know, then you're trying to backfill with other stuff that doesn't make much sense either. So it's a self-created problem. He went on to say this proves that he is no Harper stooge. Interesting. So has the government lost credibility? Is this an issue that is growing and might hurt the conservatives? Shelley Glover, let's start with you. Uh, it's very surprising to hear Tom Flanagan, someone who was at one point very close to Stephen Harper, make those comments. This is not an opposition critic. This is a former chief of staff. Uh, what do you make of that? Well, first and foremost, I didn't hear what you said to begin with because the, the CBC uh, people are having some problems with uh, the mics here. Um, but I've heard some of the uh, allegations made by someone by the name of Tom uh, Flanagan. I don't know who he is. I have never seen this man on Parliament Hill. Um, he is a Canadian, I understand, and he's entitled to his opinion. But, but, but Shelley, Shelley, Shelley Glover, just we, uh, you, you don't know. Tom Flanagan is a well-known professor, editorialist, very close to Stephen Harper. He was at one point the chief of staff for Stephen Harper, and, and you're saying you don't even even know who Tom Flanagan is? I do not know Tom Flanagan. I have never met the man, and I have never seen him on Parliament Hill, and I've been there a year and a half. But he is a Canadian, and as I said before, he is entitled to his opinion, as, all are, as are all Canadians.